Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my February, March homeschool update video. And so this is a February and a March update video because this has been a heck of a spring so far between my health issues and my husband being in the hospital for like four days at the beginning of March. I just, I literally could not bring myself to film a video. I didn't want to talk about like how much this season has affected homeschool, how behind I feel, but now that I'm a bit removed from the situation, I'm able to chat about it. I'm able to see that like God was present in all of that. And even though it was hard and I didn't know what was going on and I felt like I was falling apart, we weren't really. It was okay. Yes, it affected things. It affected a lot of things. And that might not have even been that apparent on this channel because I had all these videos pre-filmed because I was anticipating my infusions for February and all this stuff. But there just a lot's happened. I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But mostly I do want to make this about homeschooling and how we are doing with all our resources. And yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan for this video. So let's just hop into all the different things I have to chat about. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back, all the things. Like I said, this is my update video for the past couple of months. Now I usually just chat about like life and family subjects, and individual subjects, and that's my plan. Like I said, it's been a bit challenging and so we've made some adjustments and I want to chat about some of those adjustments. They haven't been major, which is good. I feel like there was a couple weeks in there where I felt like this is all crashing, but it really wasn't. And so, like I said, I went through some health issues in February. I had some scheduled infusions for my autoimmune disorder and the first infusion didn't go as well as expected. There were some complications, some major complications, and it resulted in me kind of going to doctor after doctor and getting my blood drawn. And it was just kind of this whole fiasco, right? I'm feeling much better. I don't really know the plan. We're not totally out of it, but I'm doing much better. And then it was like, right when that was kind of starting to feel better, bam, my husband ended up in the hospital and it was just challenging. Now he's fine and it's okay. And even during that time, I knew he was okay. It was just this like overwhelm that kind of brought me down. It was like, it was so hard to hold and to carry all the different things I had going on because I wanted things to stay somewhat normal for my kids. Obviously they knew like things were happening were visiting daddy in the hospital and things like that. But I also didn't feel like me falling apart was the best thing for them, right? So I tried to keep things somewhat normal and it was challenging. We changed some stuff for homeschool and really what I ended up doing for this season when things were just kind of overwhelming is we stuck to some obvious stuff. We did math and language arts, but we didn't always do math and language arts. I think that's important because sometimes you'll hear videos and you're like, just do the basics. It's like, well, sometimes all I could do was math with one child. And maybe the next day I would do math or maybe I just do language arts or maybe I do skip counting and language arts. So I would try and like figure out what I could do best. And yes, it probably is going to push us an extra week or two to the end of May instead of the middle of May. And that's okay because to me to have chosen to put more on my plate during those couple of weeks was just silly it wasn't the right decision and so we just adjusted and on top of that we are going to pick up some new things going into the spring which maybe i will just talk about that now and so one of the first things we did is as i was looking at my read alouds that were coming up for sunlight especially sunlight hblc for my big kids is I had during my yearly planning, which I'll link that video above, this year I had gone through the whole book list and I had decided like if there were some things I could drop, which would they be? And I am so happy I did that because it made me feel like, oh right, this actually was a book that I was like, it's okay if we push it to summer or if they listen to it on audiobook. And so what I decided to do was to take this book because this was the next book we were supposed to be reading and I just, I have no idea what this book is about. It might be amazing. It just felt very kind of historical. And what I wanted was, I wanted something just delightful and fun. And so this was, I think, the March dart that was coming from Brave Rider. And I knew it was coming. I wasn't anticipating using it, but I decided to get the book from the library and just read it. Like we're not using the dart and all of the things. We used a little bit of the copy work. I chatted through some of the things, especially in the copy work that we hadn't really chatted about before, like semicolons and things like that. And we also go through 
our big juicy questions. I pulled that out. I use that as my bookmark. And we're just reading the book. And what really drew me to this book was it's about a bird and a boy who plays a piano. And my son has been playing the piano with his grandma for the past year. And I just, I thought this might be kind of something he could relate to. And you guys, he totally has. He's been so inspired to like play piano and different things. And we've been looking up Chopin and like listening to Chopin because this book is about a boy who's playing Chopin in like a competition. And there's this bird that there's just a bird. I won't say more than that, but it was the perfect decision because it just shifted things. It gave a little bit of life and spark and delight to the month. Like I just started it kind of at the beginning of March. And so that was just a good decision. There was another book scheduled for sunlight that I think we're also going to skip. And it's about average by Andrew Clements. Now, my daughter actually has already listened to this. Last summer I was trying to figure out which books we could listen to on audio and I downloaded this and she just did, just listened to it without me realizing it and she really liked it. And so I might have my son listen to this too. And yeah, and then that'll be this book. And so I feel like there is freedom in being able to kind of go off script when needed or when, just if you want to. You don't have to have like a life crisis to go off script by any means, but it it helped kind of rejuvenate some things. I feel like also I've been doing a lot of homeschool planning for next year, which those were a lot of the videos I had pre-filmed. And then we are also doing a dinosaur unit. So stay tuned for that. So basically my twins who are six years old have been dino obsessed. And it's funny because I made a video, like I'll, I'll put it above, but this was like three years ago or something. My hair was so much shorter. And this was when my son, my oldest, was dinosaur obsessed. And so I had all these resources and I watched my old video to see the activities we had planned and sticker books and different things. And so I watched it and I picked up a lot of those resources again. And I've added a few more because now I have some older kiddos. And we are mainly using Build Your Library's prehistory unit. And we are still using that as kind of a spine and backbone. I just kind of add to it and take away some things. And I am mostly planned to do that kind of post spring break because I'm filming this during spring break and so we have nine weeks left. So during those nine weeks, we're gonna do a dinosaur unit. I still have to figure out exactly what we're gonna drop out of say my twins curriculum in order to make room for this, but I should do that because they're really interested and they're super excited for this unit. They have a little bit of a countdown to when this will start. So clearly it's a good decision. And so that's kind of like broadly speaking what's going on. As for like specifically, family subjects, what's been going on over these past couple months. You know, it's fine. I feel like I'm a bit tired. I'm a bit kind of burnt out and my kids get that way too. So when we're talking like history for my big kids, we're in year two of two of world history, HBLC for sunlight. And it's kind of just starting to jumble because by the time we get to kind of these later time frames, you're talking like 1700s and early 1900s and there's a lot going on all over the world, right? You're not just talking like, oh, well, only Egyptians is what we're talking about. And I feel like it's been good, but it's been a little bit much. And maybe that's just kind of my mental state as well. But yet there has been some standout stuff. We really enjoyed the explorers. I feel like that's a really good stage for understanding some of the history when you're talking like Central America, South America, or India, or things like that, to understand the explorers and who came during what time, what were they looking for? Things like that, that was really good. That helped my kids out a lot. They also loved all the Louis the 14th, like France and the revolution. I thought they really engaged with that and they just found that really interesting. Maybe it was just his character. And so I feel like history, science, that, that's that been good. The science for the big kids, my son has been loving because it's getting into kind of more technology stuff. So like we were doing like magnets, electricity, we got to our biography for the year, because I love this about sunlight science, is we got to this book, which is Electrical Wizards, How Nikola Tesla Lit Up the World. And my son was super engaged in this. We actually watched a number of other videos talking about Edison versus Tesla, and even kind of modern day Tesla cars and things like that. So this was really good. They loved it. And I think that's, that's all I'm gonna say about the HBLC, HBLK, it's been kind of a similar story. I feel like my twins have kind of turned their brains off when we've been doing the history. Part of it was this book. This was part of their history. And it's a missionary story. Now I like these. So this one's called The Good News Must Go Out, True Stories of God at Work in the Central African Republic. I think this is a good book. I did know, based on the instructor guide's notes, as well as 
a lot of the chatter on the Sunlight Moms group is that there is some things about this book that people don't like, like get pretty feisty about. And I knew that. So I just pre-read it. I was reading it. I knew it had to do with like this woman, Margaret, who goes into the Central African Republic and God is calling her and her family, her small children, to go to this remote tribe that is involved in cannibalism. And I knew that ahead of time. So what I was able to do was kind of try and draw out how God is calling us, how all people are important to God. I did not use the word cannibal with my six-year-olds. I did not want to have to explain it. And I think the heart of the book is still there if you kind of change it a little bit. And that's what I did. And I thought that was what I needed to do for my family. I think the story is important and the messaging is important, more important than just throwing the book out because of that being a challenging topic. Now, funny enough, cannibalism actually came up in a different book. It came up in this book, Duet, but it was with my big kids and it was, the bird actually just kind of mentioned something about how like, there's this crazy species of birds that eats other birds and so humans and birds are alike in cannibalism, right? Or something like that. I can't remember the exact wording, but he's like, humans eat other humans? And I was like, okay, we can talk about this. And you know, but it, it was a 10 year old and I thought that was a lot more appropriate. So I am not a person who is like, I'm gonna shy away from hard things. There's an age appropriateness to it. And I think this is a good book. Otherwise, there was so much in it that was good. And so that was a major part of their history. Otherwise, we're, we're going through history rather quickly and they're just not retaining it. And so that was another reason why I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna replace some of that with a dinosaur unit. Might not be all of it, I still have to work that out. But they haven't necessarily been loving the history. They have been loving the science. They always love the science and the experiments and the science guy and they loved this book. This was like their favorite book of this recent number of months and it's Wingari's Tree of Peace a true story from Africa. And so this has to do with just this woman who is in Kenya and she helps other women plant trees when she realizes that for some reason they were cutting them down. And then the women had to work harder to go further to get water. And so she, instead of like relying on the government, just decided to start this tree planting thing and brought a lot of people along with it. And it actually disrupted things and she was like, put in jail for it as a troublemaker and things like that. And it was just a really good story. It was fun to talk with my boys about just being stewards of the earth and what God has called us to care for and to care about. And so it was a good story. They really liked it. So I would say that is kind of history, Bible, literature, other than the literature. So read aloud. So what we have been reading, my twins, we've actually read more. Yeah, we've read these three books. And we read Anna Hibiscus, which we loved. We loved this book. It has to do with a girl in Africa and just kind of her day-to-day -day life. The, what we love about it is she has twin baby brothers. And it was just fun to see, like, there was one scene where she, like, tied them to the leg of a table because she just couldn't keep track of them. And my family loves that since we have twin boys. I mean, they're not babies anymore, but they used to be. And so it was fun and delightful. We also read the first boxcar children. My twins have been listening to these for a long time via audio, and so it was just fun to read. And then The Silver Balloon, which I might have talked about last time, but this is just a sweet short story about a boy who kind of sends a message on a balloon, and this man kind of starts writing to him, and they form a friendship via letters. It's really sweet and really cute. So we finished those three, and then we have one more, and potentially this extra one. So I have this came with my used set. It's Mary on Horseback, Three Mountain Stories. This has to do with the traveling library during, nope, not library, the traveling nurses in the Appalachian Mountains during World War I. And I think it'll be a good story even though we're not too focused on history. I think that'll be fun to bring in. And then for my big kids, we read this one, The 21 Balloons by William Penny Du Bois. It is a Newbery winner. It is a really good book. It's a very unique and interesting book. The, my kids liked it more than I did, to be honest. I feel like this kind of bogged down a bit, especially in the details of the balloon. And so it basically has to do with this man who has a hot air balloon and he wants to just kind of escape life and he's going over the Pacific to see where he could go, kind of sort of idea. But then he crash lands on this island, but this island's very unique and there's unique people on it. And 
there's a lot of detail in that. It's very imaginative. It's, it's very fun and yeah, we'll just leave it at that. It wasn't my favorite, but they enjoyed it. I wouldn't say it's their favorite either, but it was a good book. And so we read that. They are reading things at night. We're reading the Wing Feather Saga still. And I love these books. We're on the second one, North or Be Eaten. So good, so good. I don't have anything else extra to say. We're gonna keep reading those probably this summer. Let's hop into my individual kids. So I have my fourth grader, my oldest, he's a boy. And how he's doing, he's doing good. Like math is going fine, nothing crazy. He's just kind of going bit by bit. Like we correct it and go through things and sometimes he misses a lot and he's upset. But for the most part, he's learning and progressing. And then logic of English, it's the same. He's progressing really well. What I have a decision to make is we have nine weeks left of school and there's nine units left left in level A. And I'm trying to decide if I just wanna push it because it's quite difficult to get one unit in per week because we do a four day week because we have an enrichment school. But yet I think he's ready for the harder spelling words. So I'm thinking of figuring out how best to do that, how to kind of speed things up to finish out level A because you do go back through all of this stuff in level B and level C of logic of English essentials. So that's what I'm thinking about doing with him. But some amazing things about him is he is taking off with reading. He loves reading. So he is reading some things for school, which I'll show you in just a second. But I also got him hooked on the Alcatraz book. So it's Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians is the first book in the series. It's by Brandon Sanderson. I listened to it on audio first just to see if it was appropriate for him and not too scary, but he's 10 and he loved it. He loved the books. And so he started collecting them and he started reading them because the audiobooks there's only the first two. And so there's six books in the series. So he started reading them and he's reading them so fast. And it has perfect like 10 year old boy humor. And there's so many things that just delight him and he wants to tell me about it. So that has been a huge hit is that's his free time reading. Like he just finished the last book. He was reading like book four in like three days. It's, it's a decently sized book. I mean, it's like these sizes. And so I'm so excited. I love reading and I love that he is finding something he likes, but he is also reading things for school. So he is reading the Sunlight Level 4 Readers. So he read Henry and Ribsy over these past couple months, as well as Socks by Beverly Cleary. They're both by Beverly Cleary. And then he picked this one, Escape from Lemoncello's Library. He is like three quarters of the way through this. And I've been letting him pick because I think we have more than he can go through in level four. So I've just been letting him pick from his stack, which ones he wants to read. And he picked this one and it's one of the biggest ones in level four, but he's totally fine. He's totally ready for it. He's just, he's taken off with reading and it's been really fun. It's been really fun to kind of engage with him on that. So that's been good. The other thing that has been really good and so I can't remember where I updated you guys on this, where I was, I think it was my mid-year update, where for him, he was just kind of struggling with there not being enough structure in the Sunlight Language Arts composition section. And he just requested a more structured program, which I then decided on using structure and style from IEW. That was part of my unboxing in the, I think the last video. And so that's what we're doing. I just didn't want to start that right now. I was like, that's for fall. I still need to figure it all out. So what we decided to use was the Brave Writer Partnership Writing course. And I love that we're just kind of taking this semester to pull out some really interesting projects. And he's done really good. Like he did this little mini book. It's a homophone mini book. And instead of drawing pictures, he kind of cut them out. And we talked about homophones and he just, it was really just a fun little project. He did a whole like timeline and maybe I talked about this last time, but he made a timeline of his trip to Legoland. And then the next project he's working on, I think it's called like who, what, where, when. And what I love about this is it is a project, a writing project that has to do with research, but it's not with the intention of taking the research and making a paper. It's focused on the research and organizing thoughts and organizing facts and how to find facts, how to write them down, how to like, organize them in what category are they in the why category, the how, the who, the, you know what I mean? And so I asked him like what he wanted to learn more about. And he said the attacks on 9-11 because he had read a book, this book, 
the I Survive books, which I highly recommend these for boys at this age, the I Survive books, The Attack of September 11th, 2001. And so this is like a novel, but at the very back there is some facts about what happened on that day. And so he had started with this, but then I was like, okay, I'll go to the library and I'll get more information. And so I picked up this one, America Under Attack, and this one, which I think this one will be the most useful. So this is what were the Twin Towers. And so what we're gonna do and what we started doing is we go through the resources and you make note cards. And I'm having him do it. And this is very partnership. And so I'll sit with him and help him be like, oh, we should add that to a note card. That information about exactly what time the second tower was struck, things like that. And we write it down and it's good because then I can see how he wants to write like the whole sentence. And I was like, no, you don't need that like lead in clause. You're just writing facts, you know? And then once we get these all organized, we'll spread them out on the table and figure out what goes where. And maybe we have a lot of information for what, but none for who and things for that. So I really like that. I feel like it's de-emphasizing the writing. It's taking the pressure away to make something of this information. And it's just practicing researching and organizing, researching and organizing. And I'm even considering doing it again with a totally different topic. And so he can just have more and more practice with it. I do believe like Sunlight Language Arts uses some of this like note carding method for research papers. So I think it's perfect because eventually I do want to aim to get back into the Sunlight Language Arts after kind of our stop off in IEW. That's my general plan, but you know how, you know how plans go. Anyway, so that's what he's working on. And it's been great. It's been so fun. And then my third grader, my, my daughter, she's fantastic. It's been a year of trying to figure her out and it's been good and it's been fine. We're in the good and the beautiful level three. I'll link the video where I talk more about why we switched that. It's been a good fit. She really enjoys the read together books that we read together. She does well with the grammar and the writing because we just had our first assessment. So I was curious how this was going. The spelling is a struggle still. And it's hard to know exactly what to do with her, but it's the first time through. It's the first unit. We have one more unit to do before summer. And so we're just gonna see how that goes with the spelling. And then I will assess. I just put out a huge spelling comparison video, but I'll assess what she needs come next fall if it's just to continue with the good and the beautiful and maybe we'll make some tweaks with that or I don't really know, but that's the one part of it that she still struggles with. So that is what it is. And then as for math, <laughs> she's doing fine. She just really hates skip counting and memorizing her facts. And so I didn't realize it had gotten quite as bad as it was until she was starting to get really frustrated with the fact sheets. And so I was like, okay, we're gonna dial this back. We're gonna work on, I printed out some skip counting sheets that I just put in page protectors with a marker and she's doing it now every morning. We're going through these skip counting exercises. It's not even during her math time. She'll have math more kind of late morning. And so this is honestly just extra practice. And so that's where she's been. And then as for reading, she's doing really well too. So she's working her way through all of the level three books from Sunlight. So she read like this one, Cora Freer. She read A Question of Yam. So this was a missionary story. She liked it. She's currently reading this one. She really likes it, The Last Little Cat. And I think she only has one other one left. And so I did pick her up these. These are the Badger Hills Farm books. There was six in the series from The Good and the Beautiful. And it follows up the story of Timothy and Zoe after the first book we read together. So she was already attached to the character. So it was natural she wanted to pick these up. What I didn't anticipate is that she was going through them very quickly. So I'm not reading these with her. She reads these at night sometimes. And like, it takes her like two nights to get through these. And I'm like, are you reading it close enough? But yet she can tell me what it's all about. So I'm sure she's skimming at some of it or making up some words, but she's reading. And so we will just continue on. Uh, with that. But that's my daughter. Okay, I realize I'm going a little quickly, but my twins. I feel like I could make a whole video on what I've learned about twins, but I think I'll wait until I have more experience because this has really been the first year where we've been working more on skills. The preschool years, I, I wasn't too worried about it. This year we're doing a Becca K5 for both their phonics as well as their math. 
and it's been going well. They're progressing. They're like bit by bit by bit. I've been really proud of them and I think they're just right where they should be. The issue, the issue is them, the competitiveness of the two of them. Because I was trying to teach them at the same time. It's like the same material. It's convenient. It's easier for me. It's worse for them. They just, they fight and they compare and they get all upset about so-and-so is going faster or he got to practice his blends first or, you know, kind of whatever kind of gets them. And most days went like that. It wasn't always. Sometimes we'd have like an amazing lesson where they could handle it, but it really wasn't working for them. It kind of, it created more stress. And so what I realized is I was choosing to teach them together because that was more convenient for me right? Like I have a decent amount of young children. I don't have like high schoolers who are independent, you know? And so the idea of teaching them separately was like, oh, I don't want to do that. But I started, I started doing that over the past couple months and it's what I need to do. It's exactly what they need. It works so much better. They are engaged. They're able to kind of roll with me and, you know, and they'll answer their flashcards or do kind of their phonics practice or read their little cards. And, you know, it takes double the amount of time. And I think I just had to release that and be like, this is what's best. Yes, am I working more into the afternoon than I like? Yeah, more than I ever have in the past. But I need to, and I had to accept that and just let it go. And so I'm not sure what next year will bring, but for the remainder of the spring semester, I am teaching them separately. They're still kind of tracking together. So it's not like one is behind the other. They're tracking together. They just don't do well learning in the same space. And so I've split them up for at least skills-based stuff, not their other read-alouds and things like that. The other thing I want to mention about my twins especially if you're interested in a Becca K5, which I will make a review on this, is we got to about lesson, I feel like in the 90s, 95, and we have significantly slowed down. Like I've taken two days to do one, or I've just done the reader on one day, because at that point, that is when a Becca teaches the two vowel rule. And this is an important rule and it really helps out, but it takes practice. Like they've been learning the short vowels this whole time, so they really wanna just make a short vowel with like the word bike. They want it to be a short I, but it takes practice to see the two vowels, to know the first one says it's long sound, the second one is silent, or at least for the most part. And so we're doing a lot of work with that. So there's one little book that they've been using, their readers from the K-5 program, and we've just been reading it over and over and over and over. And I see it, I see them stop. They'll start to sound it out and then they stop and they're like, oh, and then they'll they'll do it with the long sound. So. I just wanted that skill to be more honed before we kept trekking on because I feel like Abeka will do that. It'll just keep going. It'll just keep going. There is some practice. There is some extra phonics review, whatever, you know, it's like, and we will use those, but I feel like it needed me to slow it down. And I have learned that as a homeschool teacher, that's something that I've struggled with in the past is I've just kept going and trusted that the curriculum knows best or whatever. And it's like, no, I know my kids. I know that like, this skill needs to be really good before we keep going. And so that's what we've been doing. And I've already accepted the fact that we're probably gonna start up in the fall, finishing out K-5 before we start grade one, because I feel like Abeka is notoriously ahead. And so we will just keep working on the skills. I'm focusing more on the skills than I am on curriculum completion at this point. And so, yes, I've learned a lot about teaching reading. Maybe I will make a video after I get these guys up and running as to what I've learned, but that's what's going on with them. And so all in all, you guys, it's good. Yeah, we had to push some stuff and you know, we're probably gonna go a little later than I intended, but I survived. I survived February and March. And I hope, you know, we're smooth sailing from here, but I can't even guarantee that. But I can guarantee that God's gonna walk with us and I can trust that. And he has so far, he's brought us through. We have accomplished a lot and we made it we made it through those, these past like six weeks. It's just been so challenging. So anyway, I'm sure I've forgotten something to update you guys on. So let me know down below if you have any question about like a curriculum that I talk about that I forgot to talk about because I'm a little scattered right now. Let me know if you have any questions or if you're, you have a question that you're thinking about using that curriculum moving forward, just let me know. 
Otherwise, you guys, I love making these update videos. I hope you are doing well, and I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.